here and welcome to Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. I'm your host and on this show, twice a week, we'll be going over all of the day's movie news as well as going over what it means for the production in general, such as casting decisions, trailer announcements, director announcements, things like that. So without any further ado, let's get started with today's Hot Topics. Legendary Pictures and director Duncan Jones have revealed the very first official image from their upcoming adaptation of Warcraft. Now, this image is of the orc known as Orgrim, who will be the wielder of the Doomhammer. Now, Orgrim is the secondary, I guess you could call bad guy, if you're going to call the horde in this movie bad guys. Um, the one aspect, even before I start talking about the picture... The one aspect of this film that really has me intrigued is that Duncan Jones, who's directed Moon, which is one of my favorite sci-fi films of all time, and he also directed uh, Source Code, which was actually a really cool time travel type movie, and, and I thought it was done really effectively with Jake Gyllenhaal. Now, he has gone on record to state that this movie is very much about both sides, that we are going to get either either he was inferring to equal screen time or that they were actually going to be delving into all of the... Uh, not necessarily responsibilities, but they were going to be delving into all the characteristics of each side. We weren't getting the alliance and them being the cut, uh, the outright heroes and then the horde being the villains. No, it's going to be a very blurred line. You're going to see from both sides who's good and who's bad. Very Kind of similar to, um, if you guys remember Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Spoilers who haven't seen Dawn of... Well, it's not really even spoilers. I mean, they kind of showed this in the trailer, but spoilers if you have not seen Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. In that movie, there's no real clear-cut good guy or bad guy in terms of the apes or the humans. They both have both. They both have good guys and they both have bad guys. And I think that's going to be the approach that they're going to be taking with Warcraft. Now, that's not 100% official. Like, that's just kind of my speculation based on what Duncan Jones has said. Um... But it's the the fascinating thing to me is that half the cast in this movie is going to be complete mocap, which leads me into the picture. Now, this picture is absolutely stunning. Like this is that is full CG. That is not just CG on the face with with like a body mold. That is one hundred percent CGI. Now that is absolutely incredible. I've never seen realistic CGI done that well. No, we've had it come close. We've had it come close, but with the amount of detail that gets put into this, and, and I, I keep going back to Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, but the, same with that movie, and every hair, like every strand of hair looked perfect. And then looking at this, everything just looks in place. Like it actually looks like somebody in makeup. Now, the question that could obviously come up from this is why not just put a whole bunch of people in makeup? Well, the problem with that is that you can't get the full articulation out of all the emotions that they're going to require to be, to give. Um, you can't, I, I mean, outside of the eyes, and even then you're going to be under so much prosthetics that you, the, the weight of it and the strength of it in order to make sure that it stays on your face is going to be so strong that it cannot articulate those little tiny uh, intricacies of somebody's face, of somebody's reaction to something. And so that's why they did mocap. Um, and I, I, I mean, again, this is just a still image. We don't know how he's moving yet. I mean, he might look kind of wonky, like they might look a little weird when they're moving, but just based on the still image, I mean, this is incredible. I mean, you can actually, just looking at the eyes of the character, I'll bring up the picture again, the eyes, like you can see that there is actually something in there. It's not just like a cool graphic. There's actually a character in there. there there's something with a soul. And that's the one thing that they've always had trouble trying to bypass is what's called the uncanny valley, which is the eyes of a CGI digital creature that you just, you can't get past the fact that it's a digital creature. You just, you, you're disassociated from it. And looking at this, it almost looks like they've trumped it. Now, we've seen circumstances before in, in movies like, again, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes or even Avatar, where they have overcome that. And, you know, absolutely, like, that's cool. They were, the, they were the forebearers of this. But this movie, I think, is going to take it to a whole new level in terms of the importance to the story. Now, I, I mean, again, well, not even then. Yeah, no, it, disregard what I just last said. Uh, I'm on a lot of pain meds right now. Um but damn, I mean, the look of this film so far, and again, we've really only seen this, and we saw those two little teaser posters, one of the, the Alliance uh, Sword and Shield, and then of the Doomhammer for the Horde. Now, we still haven't seen any of the human characters, what they look like yet. Um, 
but I mean, good God, like this movie looks absolutely stunning. Again, just going off of this one picture. Now the movie's more than a year away. It doesn't come out until June 10th, I believe. Yeah, June 10th of next year. Now it was originally supposed to come out in March, but that was just before Batman v Superman. They were smart to move this to a June release. Now, Going into summer, it's going up against some heavy hitters. There's a couple of movies opening up before it. There's a couple of movies opening up. Like, I think the one it's opening right up against, not that it'll give it a lot, a big run for its money, but it's a sequel to Now You See Me. Um, and then there's, I think, Uncharted currently is scheduled to open that day, but that's definitely going to be pushed because they um, they haven't announced a cast, they haven't announced anything, and, and we're just about a year away. Now, that's a movie that you're going to need to shoot for about three to four months and then still do a lot of post on it. Unless they've been secretly doing that, which I highly doubt, Uncharted's going to be moved. Um, which is unfortunate, because Uncharted is one of the ones that I'm looking forward to even more than I'm looking forward to Warcraft, because I'm a huge Uncharted fan. But, I mean, just looking at this, like, I mean, the cast alone, Dominic Cooper, Toby Kebbell, Travis Fimmel from Vikings. You have uh, Paula Patton. You have Rob Kaczynski, who is actually the one who is playing Orgrim. That, that's Rob Kaczynski. For those of you who don't know who that is, um, he is currently going to be starring in, I believe it's called The Frankenstein Code, which is a TV show that's going to be uh, starting up in the fall. But also he was, I can't remember the name, but he was the dick pilot in um, uh, Pacific Rim. He was the one who always went up against Raleigh, is how we pronounce his name. You know, he always made fun of him for that. And he he was the dick pilot. And that's Rob Kaczynski. He's the one who's playing him. Now, looking at the picture, you can't really tell, which is, I think, a good thing. Because we don't need it to look like Rob Kaczynski. We just need to know that Rob Kaczynski is capable of portraying that character. Which I personally think that he definitely has the chops for it. He just hasn't been given um, enough of a platform. Because, I mean, he, he was even cast... Like, just looking at the contention of an actor like this, he was cast in the Hobbit movies. He was going to be one of the dwarves. And then, due to personal reasons, as far as I'm aware, he had to pull out of the production. He was actually um, on set for the first, like, two or three weeks, and then he had to pull out. Um, which is unfortunate, but we're going to get to see him, you know, uh, do his thing in Warcraft, which I'm really excited about. So, Warcraft is going to be opening up on June 10th of next year. So, w within the next... I'm assuming we're going to get a big panel for this at Comic-Con. I mean... It makes sense for them to do this. Um, so I think we're going to get a big presence from this movie there. Either that or they're going to have some sort of convention on their own, which kind of seems to be the thing that everybody's doing nowadays. Um, seeing as how Marvel was so successful, and now Disney is really utilizing the fact that they have D23 now and their Star Wars celebration. I mean, everybody's kind of being given their own convention, and SDCC is, is starting to look like it's going to be DC's world uh, this year. Now, we still haven't heard anything about Fox for San Diego Comic-Con, but it looks like DC's year is going to be this year. So be on the lookout for that. But when it comes to Warcraft, we're probably going to get some more information on this in the next few months. And when we do, I will definitely update you guys on here. For a movie that seemed like it was destined to stay in development hell, we now have our first official trailer for the upcoming Steve Jobs biopic simply titled, or simply titled Steve Jobs. Now, this movie is directed by Danny Boyle, who's directed such films as Trainspotting, uh, Sunshine. He did Slumdog Millionaire. Um, it's, it's written by Aaron Sorkin, who, of course, from The West Wing and obviously Social Network. Um, and most recently, I believe, is The Newsroom is the TV show that he's been doing, which is an incredible TV show. If you guys haven't watched it, Jeff Daniels on that is impeccable. Um, just a great, great TV show. I definitely recommend it. But getting to this trailer, wow. I mean, first off, very reminiscent of the first trailer that we got for The Social Network. Now, the, the first trailer for The Social Network was kind of done with just Facebook posts. And you had audio recording. Like, you had the, the lines of dialogue from the movie that were just placed over all of these different images. Excuse me, all these different images. And then even just this one picture of just uh, of Zuckerberg's face. And this trailer felt very similar because, again, it was a series of voiceovers that were done over basically just one shot of Steve Jobs standing in an empty auditorium, just looking out at the empty auditorium with all of these voiceovers playing over. And then we got quick little snippets of each of the main characters. I am very curious about this movie, mainly because, and, and now I wasn't worried about Seth Rogen until I heard the delivery of his line in the trailer. And it took me out of it because it really seemed like he was acting. Not that he was being the character, but that he was acting. Now, maybe it's just because I'm reading too much into it or something of that fact, but I just, I felt, he's like, you don't write code. You don't do this. What? 
do you do? Like it was, it just felt so forced. Um, and, and I felt that it was the wrong line for them to choose for a trailer, for an advertisement. It might fit perfectly in the context of the movie, but as a trailer, I felt that it was the wrong line for them to choose, but everything else about it was great. Like, especially I said this line, I sat in a garage and invented the future because artists lead and hacks asked for a show of hands. That's an incredible line. That's pure Sorkin right there. That is utterly pure Sorkin. But just thinking about that line, like that fundamentally is the base of the movie. You know, he is somebody who is out of touch of the rest of the world in terms of his innovation, in terms of his imagination, and in terms of his ability to combine the two. So, you know, just, just saying like, yeah, I sat in my garage and I invented the future. You know, I mean, just the power of that line alone has me just eat, just I, I just grasping at the bit. I, I want to get a full sample of this. I want to see another trailer. I want to see this movie. Like this has me hooked. This did it. This was an incredibly well done trailer. I mean, yeah, the the light like the one thing that I always try to pick up in a lot of these movies, especially when I see the trailer for uh, a movie that comes out about a very high profile director, I try to find their style. I try to find their their visual style, their lighting style, and all that kind of stuff. And the one shot that I found it in, out of all of them in the trailer, that, well, there's only like seven, but out of all of them in the trailer was the one shot with Kate Winslet. That, to me, was a Danny Boyle shot because the lighting, the composition of the shot, the focus of the shot, everything about it felt Danny Boyle. It felt like Slumdog Millionaire. It felt like Sunshine. It felt like Train Spot. Well, not so much Train Spotting, but that was a really weird movie. Uh, very, very good. If you haven't seen Train Spotting yet, gotta see it. But no, th this looked incredible i mean and with somebody as talented as michael fassbender playing steve jobs i mean yeah so what he doesn't really look like him oh well half the time we don't get anybody who looks like anybody anyway like look at when tom hanks did um walt disney yeah he had the mustache otherwise did not look like him so it was you know it, that to me is meh, just push it off to the side i don't really care it's not not going to be that big of a worry it would have been cool if somebody who they had cast, like originally it was going to be Christian Bale, and Christian Bale looked a hell of a lot like Jobs when they showed that that side by side picture. Um, so, but I mean, just just think about this as great of talent that's involved right now. And I got to admit, like this is a class talent, absolutely no no bar none. Like this is a class talent. What would this have looked like, directed by David Fincher, starring Christian Bale? How, like I wonder how different it would have been. Because Fincher's style is unique to Fincher. It's nobody can really copy it. There have been people who tried to imitate it, but nobody can really copy it. And I just, I want to know what theirs would have looked like. It, it was, it would have been so fascinating. But alas, through the Sony leaked emails, we kind of know why that didn't come to pass, which is unfortunate, but still. For those of you who haven't seen the trailer, there's a link in the video, of the, uh, uh, in the link of this description uh, below. So if you guys haven't watched it, you can click that link and check it out for yourselves. But this movie is going to be opening up on October 9th of this year. So it's prime placement for Oscar uh, contention or at least awards contention. I have a feeling if they're doing Oscar 9th or Oscar 9th, I, if they're doing October 9th, um, I do have a feeling we're going to see this premiere at TIFF. I mean, it only makes sense. TIFF's only about a month before it. So this would make sense. The one thing that I hope doesn't happen is that this is just a train wreck and that this is just a, a means of getting this product out and that they happen to get great talent, but nobody really connected. It's going to take another trailer to convince me of that, but everything that I've seen so far has me psyched, has me excited for this movie. I'm down with it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And uh, again, the movie's going to be opening up on October 9th. When we do get more information about this topic, I will definitely update you guys on here. With Captain America Civil War currently filming in Atlanta, um, and they're currently actually shooting an African market scene, which we all know is going to take place in Wakanda, um, Just Jared has been all over this film shoot with getting great high-resolution pics of all of the action that's going down. So we've seen, um, we've seen Falcon on set, we've seen Cap on set. Now, Cap, I don't know if he's wearing his new suit or if he's wearing his suit from Avengers 2 because they both... They both look so similar. There's only slight differences between the two. Falcon is wearing his new duds that we got to see at the end of uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. Um, but more importantly, we get our first official look at crossbones. Full-on crossbones in this movie. And my God, does he look badass. I mean, this, 
I, I didn't expect the character to look this cool. I mean, I was kind of thinking that he was going to have a Punisher-esque look. I figured it was going to be more of like a tactical jacket, kind of like what he looked like in Winter Soldier, just with more scars, um, which we do get scars. I mean, you can see you can see on the picture here, and, and I'll even pull it up here for you, um, that you can see the scars on his eyes. Like, he, he is damaged. I mean, that, that was a brutal incident that he went through at the end of Winter Soldier. And seeing him come back and pissed off more than ever, like, look out. Like, this guy looks frightening. This looks terrifying. I mean, imagine. Look, just look at those gauntlets that he has. Those giant, uh, they almost look like Rock'em Sock'em Robot pu uh, punching gloves. Like, the, that he'll just, he'll hold it and it'll go like, almost like what, uh, what the Hulkbuster had. When he was fighting uh, Iron Man, you know, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, th like, this is what he looks like. This looks absolutely incredible. I did not assume that he was going to look that badass. He almost looks like a friggin' robot. Like, th that looks incredible. Imagine Cap seeing that come up and Falcon going, oh, hell no. You know, like pulling a Will Smith. Um, you know, or, or like, I I'm not even going to say because that would have been a major spoiler for uh, for Age of Ultron. But um, the main thing to me, like, he's, the hydraulic fists are incredible. I, th there's only so much to go off of in this picture because we don't really see him moving around. Um, we don't see the scene in action. And I, I, I'm not willing to go so far to actually watch video of onset interactions. Um, they just had one that was released today, uh, or it might have even been last night, about Joker and Harley Quinn. Um, and I, I refuse to watch it because they said that it, it might give some details away and I'm not willing to do that. Pictures are fine because they're out of context. You don't know where they fit in or anything like that. You don't know the context of the sequence, but when you actually hear dialogue going along with it, that's when it can get into spoilery territory and, and you can, might hear one or two tidbits that you go, oh, well, and then it might not be an outright spoiler, but it might give you enough dots to connect, and then you kind of spoil it for yourself, and so I'm trying to keep my willpower up by not going to it, so I won't be covering any of those on the show, so if you guys do have any questions about that, um, I might do a specific story just on that, um, but it won't be involving any of the videos, it would just be involving the pictures that have been released, because I, I don't want to hear the lines of dialogue, yet. I want to see the movie. I want to see it in context. And I want to see it with proper lighting, proper filters, and proper editing techniques, and all that kind of stuff presented to me in the way the filmmakers are designing it to be seen. Because that's the thing. Like I, I, I like getting on set footage and, and or on set pictures because it gives us our first glimpse, especially when they're done like this, when they're not blurry, when they're not like like the Joker pics. I mean, all of those that have come out have been very blurry. And then seeing pictures like this that are done at super high resolution, this is the way to release pictures. Even if they are leaked, this is the way to release them because we don't get a blurry image. It gives us at least a little bit of an idea instead of letting us infer everything for ourselves. So, but I mean, getting back to this, the main thing with this is how substantial of a role Crossbones is going to have. Now, the going rumor right now is that he is kind of like the henchman of Baron Zemo. Um, and if that's the case, I'm cool with it because that means he's still retaining his rank within Hydra or at least a certain rank within Hydra. He might have even been promoted because of, you know, he's actually gone toe to toe with Cap uh, and even Falcon. And he kind of survived, um, you know, I mean, for the most part, internally, I guess he survived. Externally, it's all new. But I, I doubt that they're going to stick as close to the original source material as I think most people would want, because at that point we kind of know how substantial of a role he's going to be. Anybody out there who's read Civil War knows exactly where I'm going with this, so I'm not even going to spoil it. Um, but, I mean, geez. Having somebody like this in this movie, when you have everybody else, I mean, this right here means, I want to see Iron Man fight this guy. I mean, repulsors or not, I, don't use your repulsors. Don't be cheap like that, Iron Man. Come on, like Tony Stark, you can actually, you, you have an iron suit or a, you know, a metal compound. I remember the comment he made at the end of the first one. But I want to see Iron Man fight this guy because I think that would be a really interesting fight. But more importantly, I, I can't wait to see him and Cap go to toe-to-toe -to -toe with those hydraulic fists. Those look absolutely incredible. So I'm definitely on board with this. Um... They're going to be filming for a while in Atlanta, and they're going to go, I think, where they're going, Germany. Um, they are going to be going to, damn, I don't even remember where they're going. I think they're going to Italy, but that might have been for Adventures Age of Ultron. 
they're they're going all around the world. I mean, like this is going to be a very international shoot. So I'm really interested to see how this is going to play it because Civil War, like when you automatically think Civil War, you automatically assume that because it's going to be a, a more of a, a intellectual battle between Tony Stark and, and Steve Rogers, that it's going to be predominantly set in the United States. But that doesn't appear to be the case because Winter Soldier. I think that's why I'm going off of it because Winter Soldier was entirely set in the states. Um, and to see this movie really go broad and also include every Avenger except for Thor and Hulk. Uh, and I, by the way, I don't believe that Hulk is in the movie. I don't believe those reports coming out because Mark Ruffalo said, "Hey, you know, congrats, you guys are filming and all that kind of stuff." Whatever exactly he said, he did not state that he's going to be on set. And so I don't believe that he's going to be in the movie because if he is, call it Avengers Three. Don't call it Captain America: Civil War. Because it's not a Captain America movie anymore. Um, but yeah, I mean, with, with the movie filming for as long as it's going to be filming in Atlanta, I, I would expect it's going to be at least another three weeks in Atlanta. Um, and then they're going to be moving off to other locations, whether it be sound stages or anything like that. But expect a lot more of these reveals to come out soon. Um, and I do have a feeling that probably within... Oh, okay... I would say within three weeks, we have our Spider-Man. Um, I am going to go out on a limb and say that it is going to be between Tom Holland and Azure Butterfield. I, I do 100% believe that. Absolutely. I think it's between the two. If I had to choose between the two, I don't know if I could. Because Tom Holland, to me, looks a little bit more like the Peter Parker Spider-Man that I'd want to see. But Azure Butterfield behaves more like the Peter Parker Spider-Man that I'd want to see. So it's, I don't know, maybe they could do some ADR or anything like that. I, I mean, I don't know, but either one to me works. I, I, I'm I very happy with the age. A lot of people have said their biggest argument with, with this, and I know I'm kind of going off track, but it's still staying with Captain America Civil War, is that Spider-Man, we don't need another origin story. And we're not getting one. They say, oh, well, but we are because he's going to be younger. Well, no, that doesn't mean anything. He he could have already had his powers for six months to a year. We don't know exactly how long he's had his powers. We do know Kevin Feige has stated vehemently that he will have already had his powers. He is Spider-Man. Right now, there is a kid swinging around the streets of New York City. We're just not aware of him yet. So, to me, having a kid Peter Parker, and they said that they're, you know they're going to be dealing with the awkwardness of being in school and then also a kid with these powers and to me what that means is that he's going to have to with withhold the tendency to use his powers and to show them off while being at school and being this nerdy awkward kid while also simultaneously being a wisecracking crime fighter who swings around the streets of new york city that's what i think that he took or that he meant by that because that to me means no origin story and we finally get to see peter parker we don't get to see Spider-Man without his suit. I want to see Peter Parker. The closest we got to that was Andrew Garfield in The Amazing Spider-Man 1. That's the closest we've gotten to a Peter Parker. And I want to see more of that because they made him in high school. They made him that awkward kid. Now, the movie, the one brilliant thing to me that would solidify everything would be if the movie started like the opening credits or whatever it was started at the funeral of uncle Ben and then skip ahead six months. Like start with that because that tells your audience he's Spider-Man, you know, I mean, when, when dealing with his standalone film, because we don't know what time frame that movie is going to take place. If it's going to take place before civil war and actually give us an idea of how he came to be a part of that, um, we, we, everything's all up in the air. We still don't know. But to me, that would be a great opening scene in the um, Spectacular Spider-Man, or sorry, Spider-Man The New Avenger, which to me is a great title. I actually really do like that title. And if we're going to get him introduced in Civil War, um, I've read on several reports, I believe it originated, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section below, but I believe this, believe this report originated that he starts shooting in either June or July, that that was started with Collider. Um, and so Collider.com. If you guys aren't reading Collider.com, it is one of the best fan sites out there. Uh, it is not run by studios or anything of that sort. It is not one of the trades, um, but it is one of the most successful and one of the most um, reliable uh, fan sites out there. So definitely check it out, Collider.com. Definitely 100%. The, actually, you know what I'm going to do right now? Um, th this is going to finish up this episode. So if you guys don't care about this in the little next part, you guys can click away. Um, these are all the sites 
that I go to to get all of my information. These are the reputable sites that I deal with. I deal with um, soon to be Heroic Hollywood, uh, Umberto Gonzalez's new website that he's uh, that he's currently launching. But with that, I also go to Latino Review because they are very, very reliable. I go to Collider. I go to Schmoes No, uh, JoeBlow.com. Uh, I go to HitFix. I go to begrudgingly sometimes, although, and it's only because of the main writer, but the, the other writers are very, very competent. And he's even a very competent writer. I give him a lot of a hard time. But uh, Birth Movies Death, which used to be Badass Digest. Now, Devin Faraji, as much as he pisses me off a lot of the time, the dude knows what he's talking about a lot of the time as well. So, I mean, he, he frustrates me when it looks like he's making clickbait because his opinions just go against the grain for the sake of going against the grain. And if you read some of his articles, they're completely batshit stupid um, in terms of the research that he's put into some of these articles. Like when, when he does his editorials, sometimes they're just like, dude, stop, just stop. Like the one that I keep going back to is that Star Wars one. That really pissed me off when he said, you know, Star Wars is the most overrated franchise out there because he doesn't talk about any of the expanded universe. He only talks about the films and the fact that the prequels weren't very good and then the two Ewok movies and the Christmas special that were all terrible. The only real good movies that we got were the original series and to that end, the Star Wars franchise is overrated. No, it's not. The amount of lore that's in, right, that's another video for another time. But getting back to this, so yeah, it's um, um, soon to be HeroicHollywood.com, uh, LatinoReview.com, Collider, Joe Blow, HitFix, Schmoes No, um, uh, Screen Rant, 100% Screen Rant, one of the best ones that I go to. These guys are awesome. And then obviously I go to the trades, I go to Variety, I go to the Wrap, um, uh, I go to Deadline, uh, Hollywood Reporter, ComingSoon.net. Um, you know, there's a lot of them. There's one that I used to go to, which I don't go to as much anymore for news, but I go to for a quick read here and there is uh, Cinema Blend. Um, Cinema Blend to me is not a great site for reputable news stories, but it's great. It's kind of like cracked.com now where it's a lot of top five and top 10 um, uh, articles that are written nowadays, which took away from what I thought the site actually used to be because it used to be a very reputable site and now it's more, it's more clickbait site. Um, so I don't go to them for news really anymore. But yeah, I mean, the top, if I had to say five, the top five right now, it would have to be uh, Collider, Screen Rant, Joe Blow, Latino Review, and Schmoes No. Those are the top five. Um, and I mean, uh, Heroic Hollywood, depending on the type of content that they're putting out, I know that Umberto Gonzalez is a huge scoop master, uh, El Mayimbi himself. So I'm really excited to see what he's able to come up with with that. And he, already today, he put out a couple new promo arts for Batman v Superman with Superman holding Batman's throat and him on the ground and then bat another one of Batman just beating the living crap out of Superman. I mean, it's it's great. This guy, I don't know how the hell he does it. I really don't. But, uh, you know, I, I just figured I'd, I'd share that with you guys in case you were wondering exactly, you know, how in-depth I go with trying to get all the information. I try to read as many stories uh, or many sources on the same story as I can to make sure that I get all the information that I can in order to talk to you guys. Um, so, yeah, I, I hope that works. And, and I hope that uh, everybody appreciates all the shout outs. So, um, so, yeah, I mean, when dealing with Crossbones, though, that picture is just absolutely incredible. But when we do get more information about Captain America Civil War, any of the other Marvel movies that are coming out, because Doctor Strange is probably going to start shooting by the end of this year. So we're going to get some new information about that in the coming months. So I'm excited. This is a great time to be a fanboy. I know I keep saying that, but this is a great time to be a fanboy when it comes to Marvel movies, when it comes to DC movies, when it comes to Valiant Comics, or Variant Comics, sorry. Uh, all of them. Like, it's, just, it's just a great time. It's just a great time to be a fan. So when we do get more information about this topic, I will definitely update you guys on here. That'll about do it for this episode of Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have been a great audience. Go ahead and click that subscribe button there in the bottom corner and get updates whenever a new video is posted. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Nicholson, N-I-K-L-S-U-N, for all of your movie updates. And also give our Facebook fan page a like at facebook.com slash movie news with Nicholson. If you ever have a topic or a question you'd like to have talked about on the show, you can go ahead and put a comment in the comment section or you can email me at movie news with Nicholson at gmail.com. And on every Friday, Friday episode or whichever day uh, it ends up becoming from here on out, uh, then I will try to answer as many as I can. But until next time, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.